From a young age, I remember snorkeling and seeing these amazing fish and corals. And as soon as I was old enough, I got my scuba ticket. So then I could stay down longer. And then I decided, well, you know, this is what I want to do for my life. And I became a marine biologist. The things that I was most interested in was behavior. And at that stage, you know, the underwater video cameras were just starting to become commercially available. And so I got one of these and I could then start documenting fishes reproducing or feeding or fighting. And these are the, these little video clips, this is what I wanted to show people. So then they could engage with the underwater world. So now I spend my life in between the two worlds of science and filmmaking. And it's a, it's a good marriage of the two because funding for science, particularly in Australia on the reef is very limited. And so when we have the opportunity to make films, we'll have scientific programs running concurrently with them. And the good thing about this is it gives us new story. You know, we are doing the science at the same time as the filmmaking. Rain Island is a small speck on the Great Barrier Reef that exerts a massive geographic influence. It's the biggest seabird nesting site on the Great Barrier Reef. Those seabirds come from far and wide, some as far as the Northern Hemisphere. It's the world's largest green sea turtle nesting site. Those turtles come from all over the South Pacific. And the tiger sharks go thousands of kilometres as well. So they're out there doing their thing. They're feeding, they're reproducing, and then they're coming to this one speck in the ocean to have babies. All the energy from the South Pacific is funneled in through these animals acting as vectors to this one small speck in the ocean. That is why Rain Island is the most significant island in all of Australia. So filming tiger sharks feeding is an amazing event. You can get really close to these animals, so close that sometimes you have to push yourself back. But the thing about the tiger sharks that I found after you know, spending almost 20 years in the water with them is that at some point they will turn and decide to have a go. And that's when you get the really good shots, when they're coming in and try and eat the end of your camera. And you just put that in their mouth and just go for a bit of a ride backwards. And then they're like, oh, that doesn't taste right. And they'll turn around and go back to the turtle. But you just have to be ready for that time when they decide to come and have a look. And it's pretty easy to tell, you know, their, their body positioning and how they're swimming in, in the water, you can tell when they're starting to get aggravated. And the other thing about when we're filming with them is you get a second, third, fourth, and the most I've ever had at the once when I've been underwater with these animals is six at a time. And that's when you've got a safety diver behind you with a stick, you know, just to fend them off. But it does get a bit hairy when the sharks are coming at you from all directions, including directly from below you. And so the most important thing with filming things like tiger sharks in these feeding events is actually to know when to stop. You know, when you're getting to the point of no return and it's time to get out of the water. You know, visiting the same locations year after year for as long as I have, you do see change. And particularly on the inshore reefs, these have been dramatically influenced by humanity on the coastline, whether it's through agriculture, industry or urbanisation. You know, this, we have this massive water quality problem on the inshore parts of the Barrier Reef. There's a lot of sediment going out there. You know, just recently I was on a reef that I remember walking around as, as a student, it is now buried under mud. And so these inshore reefs are under huge, huge pressure. And for us as Australians, this is our problem. This is our local problem. What we should be doing to fix the reef is to fix the water quality going on the reef. So the Great Barrier Reef is not only facing local threats, but also global threats, mainly through climate change. And climate change causes issues like coral bleaching, but it also causes these massive cyclonic events. And we'd be having these Category 5 cyclones more frequently over the last couple of years. And when you go to these sites after one of these cyclones has come through, it's devastating. It reduces the reef to rubble. And to think that, you know, the predictions are we're going to have more and more of these, it's frightening. I mean, the reef does need destructive events. You know, a cyclone or a crown of thorns comes through, it makes the rubble that the reef builds upon, it takes out the fast growing fragile corals and leaves the slow growing ones behind. And 
the reef grows because you have this net gain of construction over destruction. But if we're starting to change that balance where destruction comes at a higher rate than construction, the reef is going to be under a great deal of threat. So in terms of a global issue, this is a thing for the whole world's community to worry about, the Great Barrier Reef and indeed coral reefs throughout the entire world because we are seeing dramatic effects on these environments, these reef environments, now. They're like the canary in the coal mine. It's, it's the first sign that this planet is under stress. As a marine biologist, I know, you know we go out and we count fishes, we count corals and all these kind of things to you know, gauge the health of the reef. But as a filmmaker, what I have noticed in my professional life is a change in the aesthetic quality of the reef. There are still some mind-blowing locations on the reef where you can see manta rays and sharks and fish and beautiful coral gardens. There are pockets around that are absolute jewels and people can still visit these. But in a lot of the locations we used to go to year after year for you know, these iconic images, unfortunately, a lot of these don't occur anymore. They have been destroyed by the big cyclonic events. And it is sad to see, think, you know, some of these images I've captured over the years literally will never be replicated again.